very, very sweet. He's an angel. He gets into trouble. Uh, a lot of trouble, similar to my kind of trouble, but he, he doesn't go as far as I do. Come on. Uh, no, <laughs> no, he's fucking right. He's, he's, he's spray paints uh, the set of taps, and he gets like raided by the SWAT team. Uh, he calls people trannies, and they don't come to the show anymore. Uh, he's, he's a mixed bag. He's fun, though. Uh, give it up for Thomas Zahn! <laughs> How's it going, everybody? It's pretty good. That, that's a great introduction, Dimitri. I love it. Let everybody know potential terrorism charges. No, I beat him. I, I beat him. That's good. I, uh, I actually ended up uh, seeing a therapist for about four years. We fought a lot, but the sex was great. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I, I'm from the first Jewish family uh, to join the Mormon Church. So that makes me schizophrenic, if, if you follow me on that. Um, I, the therapist, her name was Karen, you know. And, and I, I think it's fair for anyone that's named Karen out there. The, the Karens have been getting it a lot, you know. I'm the manager they've been complaining to. Um, they feel that all, all the Karen jokes are just insults, you know. It's just a weak insult. And so to try and heal the divide between the rest of the world and Karen at large, if you will. I have this joke at my ex-girlfriend's expense. Uh, See, towards the end of our relationship, like all relationships when they end in modern days, we, it became an open relationship. <laughs> and Karen started going by Sharon. And as it turned out, Karen was sharing our bed the whole time. You know what I mean? <laughs> And then I got chlamydia. <laughs> See, I, I love chlamydia as a punchline because no matter what, even if the joke bombs, you get the clap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Put a lot of work into that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 2022 was a pretty big year for me. I became a father. To a son, because I know how to fuck a woman properly, okay? Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, Jewish people, let, let, let's talk religion here for a little bit, okay? Let, let's have an ecclesiastical debate, if, that, if that's fine, you know? Because I'm schizophrenic enough to believe I'm actually the Messiah, the correction to Jesus, right? The, the one that Jewish people are waiting for, they're like, oh, wait a minute, there's a thing. But, you know, there, there, there's, there's a thing. There, there's things. Okay, so Jewish people, we believe, theoretically, right, that the Creator made everything, right? All of the things were made. And we all agree that female genital mutilation is terrible. You cut a clitoris off a woman's pussy. Terrible, terrible thing. Are we saying God made a mistake with the foreskin? Ladies, what's going on here? <laughs> Controversial. Controversial opinion, right? Are we saying God made a mistake with the foreskin? I thought it was pretty good. He made mushrooms. Seemed to know what he was doing there. Just putting that out there. Putting that out there. Mormonism is a, a pretty interesting religion to grow up with. It, it's kind of like, like being born with autism, you know? Like, it makes sense if you're in it. Otherwise, you're going to need, like, some Cole's notes, study up a little bit, follow into some things. It's weird because, like, Mormonism is to the American experiment what Christianity was to Rome. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's something that's really popular in like weird angles of the U.S. government, the U.S. military. It's a very confusing way to grow up. And, and the thing is, what Jewish people get blamed for doing, Mormons are doing. Do you know what I mean? It's like a very uh, way to talk about things that get you killed. <laughs> In a comedy show. <laughs> I uh, I once got engaged to a feminist philosophy major. Naturally, she kept the ring instead of the baby. Um, <laughs> I was posting that ad on Kijiji for crib, never been used, you know. And uh, I just got to a point where I was really depressed, really at a low point in my life. And I was living in Edmonton. Great place to be depressed. Uh, and uh, I, I was getting ready to walk and, and go jump off the high-level bridge. You know, I, I had enough. Time to check out. 
And, uh, you know, I walk and I get to my spot, and wouldn't you know it, there's a fucking guy there, right? <laughs> Anytime I want to do something, there's a goddamn lineup. Big, beautiful black man, holds in his hands, turns to me, he says, Thomas, I want to take you out to dinner. I'm confused, how does this guy know my name? <laughs> so bizarre, and he's sitting down, he's trying to tell me about his ministry and his many miracles, and I'm, I'm confused because I'm expecting to see a white guy, but I see a black guy with big holes in his hands. And then he orders a very expensive bottle of wine, and as a black Jew, you think, cheap, right? Why wouldn't he do the water and the wine trip? <laughs> it made no sense. But then he takes me to this beautiful park right next to the, the river valley there in Edmonton, and, you know, the northern lights and the stars. Does someone ever just, like, kiss you? and you like dissolve into their essence. I mean, this is what it was like when Jesus kissed me. I just, I, I became one with everything. And, and, and he started reaching down towards my crotch. <laughs> he started unzipping it slowly. And, and, and then he was utilizing the hole in his hand as he was giving me his hand. <laughs> And then he started giving me just the most phenomenal blowjob. And, and, and I had to stop him about halfway through because his beard was tickling my balls. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to get a second coming. <laughs> Long way to go for that. <laughs> it's going humor. you got to sell it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a dream, okay? I have a dream. I have a couple dreams. I have a lot of dreams. Look, we can talk about a few different dreams that I have. One involves the Queen of England getting gang raped by a bunch of Native Americans while they smash her head with a big rock. Because that's like a lesson on what justice would look like. Um, but like, I have my dream of my perfect Mormon polygamous family. Like one centered in Toronto. We take up like the top 12 floors of a condominium. <laughs> My first wife, she's gonna be Asian, okay? She's gonna make good financial decisions for the family, good investments, manage the crypto and all that shit. <laughs> then I marry uh, an Italian woman and an East Indian woman. Ooh. It's good food, right? Butter chicken, rigatoni, feed the family well. <laughs> then I marry a, a native woman and a lesbian. To raise the children well, with morals and shit like that. You know? <laughs> and I realized, I also have to marry a black guy in order to keep all those women happy, am I right, brother? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful thing, though. The Asian kids will help tutor the Italian kids so they're not stupid at math. The East Indian kids will help out with tech support, with good computers. And the black kids will get aborted, right? Oh, oh, now every child matters. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Now abortion's an issue that we care about. It's one of those things, you know, you bring up these weird Kanye things, you know, that Margaret Sagner is the one that's behind Planned Parenthood, and the idea is to make it so black people stop reproducing. Why do I care about this? Well, here's the thing. Uh, as Mormons, right, we used to be racist, like textbook racist, okay? This was in our religion. We believed that black people were the literal descendants of Cain. And now my brother's wife is from Angola. That's right, my brother is a nigger lover. We've got a mulatto niece and nephew. Are, are we not saying mulatto anymore? I just, uh, I once had a bottle thrown at me for telling that joke. <laughs> By another comedian. <laughs> it was ridiculous because, because all right, yes, I said the, the naughty word, right? right? But what's that joke telling you? The Mormon church is fucking racist, right? Am I not allowed to tell you that? All right, that was a little too much. That was a little too much to end on, a little too intense, all right. Let's reel it back. Let's reel it back. We are on the edge of a civil war. A lot of people are very scared. The government is listening. I tell you that. That's right. This year, I beat a domestic terrorism charge. Heck yeah. 2022. We're all beating all our charges. I really hope. I really hope. 
January is big for me. I go back to paralegal school. I, I, I'm going to do well in law. I'm an expert in Canadian law. My background in stand-up comedy has made that possible. Because <laughs> Canada's laws are a joke. Thank you very much. Man. That's all